What can you tell us about the Sharks and a bit of their background, Don? Well, they're a very good club side. They're tied for the lead right now with Pecunis in the uh, HBL League. And so they're a very good club side, very balanced. No particularly outstanding individuals except for Adamson, of course, but they'll all give 100%. They're a very good scrappy side, and, and they could stretch Pecunis. This is their first ever Top Shot series. The attempt from Jeff Postma was thwarted. Dan will take this all away. He's an improved player in season 86, is Van Hos Pelican. Excellent runner. He's a very good runner for a, for a big man. Very strong, and he can he can really fast break, and that's his strength. With Big Murray Shields in there, uh, they should control the boards and Sharks, and this is what Sharks have to do. See them really on Adamson. Puts up a nice soft shot, but uh, too much height in there for Pecunis. Pecunis lead by five. Almost three minutes gone in the first quarter of this second semi-final of ABC Top Shot. And the Stanwix brothers work the ball from left to right and give Warren the chance to come in and net one. Good uh, start by Pecunis, who skip away to a handy seven-point lead. Good start by the Stanwix. Brennan with four and Warren with two, hitting the scoreboard early in the piece. Again, you see that good defensive experience of NBL players. He just stripped him of the ball, takes it coast to coast. Followed up by Darren, but he tipped it out of bounds. Very, very tough defensive side, Pecunis. Play, play an extremely good brand of defense. All NBL experience. Totally unbiased comments from Don Hanson this evening, who's sitting in the hot seat because Don coaches Dominoes, who'll be in ABC Top Shot's grand final as Murray Shields rifles one just wide of the mark. And, of course, a good opportunity for you to look at the strengths and the weaknesses of the likely opponents. And you would predict... Pecunis. Oh, yes. Pecunis are, like I say, with their National League teams, they're a very good side. They have no weaknesses. You just have to play a very uh, good ball game if you're going to try to match it up with Pecunis. Jeff Prostner was unsuccessful. Van Hos Pelican, unselfish feed and fine net from Warren Stanwix, who kept on running. And they're matching up well, and they rush to a nine-point lead after just six or five minutes of this turn, the two Stanwicks having four each of two. A week ago in the uh, HBL competition against the Marty side, Pecunis scored 70 points in the first half. That's a tremendous effort. They can really score. Danny Adamson, individual move, and he's held. If you give Pecunis the running game, and is, even though they're a very tall player, you can see the replay there. Adamson spins off, and he's hooked. And uh, they'll really be keying on Danny, trying to keep him from getting to the boards. He's not real tall, but he's, he's a tremendous effort player. There's Dan Van Horst Pelican again. Good defense. Is he the only firepower they've got? The Danny? No, the they're good shooters. The, the other side can shoot, as you can see there. Sean Flaherty, good outside shooter. They're just lacking in the rebound department. Inexperience there allowed the man to get behind them in defense. A very young side, but a very keen side. 14 place five, seven minutes gone in this first quarter of the second semi-final of ABC Top Shot. An exciting series. And exciting basketball we're watching this evening. Pecunis defending their title, if they can make the grand final. They're the favourites. A nice tip by the youngster, but he couldn't pull it off. And there's Dan Van Horst Pelican on the run again, and he'll make it. 16 to 5. Oh, it's a good Pecunis. start. Yes, That's very good start. start. Good starting team, Pecunis, because they're so experienced, they don't take a long time to get into their game plan. Sharks working very hard offensively, taking the long shot. Sean Flaherty. Not much of him. Crunched. Danny Adamson, very strong on the boards. Nice soft. That's all two, uh, 211, I think, centimeters of Murray Shields, the mountain there he man. There again. Dan Van in there. Slam Dan. Good job. In run. Got an injury problem out here. Aaron Stanwix limping down the court off camera. Long three point attempt. No good. Well, there's a slap. That doesn't go unnoticed. Greg Beeston and Stuart Lehman in control. You can see Darren Stanwix there limping off the court. He turned an ankle. And here comes probably who I would rate the finest player uh, in the league right there, Barry Douglas. He is tough, both defensively and offensively. What a player to bring on the sixth player. If I had my choice of any player in the South, 
that I could have on my team. He's the man I choose. He's a tremendous player. That's a big rap as Murray Shields rifles one in. A Pecunis lead at the first timeout call by 15 points in a sensational opening to the second semi final by the hot favourites. Oh, yes, they're a tremendous shooting team. Just, just an excellent team all the way through. One person to get defensive rebounds. We're picking up the easy ones at the moment, but if they start tapping the ball up and keeping it up there a lot, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. So make sure we've got everybody responsible for defensive rebounds on this one. We don't go on a fast break until we've got it. Okay? That's all that's wrong. Offensively, there's a bit of low post action there that we're not taking advantage of at the moment. Let's make sure we get in there and work for it. Okay? Just keep running. Keith Scott there uh, giving instructions to the team. Okay. Very experienced coach, also a coach of the Devils in their early days. They're burning us on the boards. Now we've got to get better effort from the other big guys sure. inside. Come on. Hang in there. Jeff Price played with me about 15 years ago with a team called the Hawks. Still an excellent player, Jeff, even though the uh, silver threads have turned to gold or whatever the statement is. What's your story? You stick to it. <laughs> But he's a fine coach, and he's done a lot for this team. Made him very competitive in the HBL. Dale Butters in the game. Danny Adamson, a three-point attempt. Just long. And there you see Big Murray takes the ball off. It's a giant amongst the midgets. He looked for, but couldn't quite find, Barry Douglas. Pecunis have blown open a big lead. They lead by 15 points. Just over five minutes remaining. And that is a fine feed and basket by the way of Danny Adamson, who was on the receiving end. Adamson knocks in his fifth point for the first term. Van Hoss Pelican. Murray Shields is long and lanky. Hard all, to get around. All six foot 11 of him, he's a big man, look at this. Dale Butter says, holy smokes, I've got to jump up against that. Didn't do a bad effort. Good to see the aggression shown by Shields under the basket. This oh. sort of competition, and uh, we don't want to talk too much about the NBL, but Shields has had a mixed-up sort of a season, and this type of game, where there is some pressure because they're playing for a shot in for big stakes, this is the sort of game where if, if he can get some confidence back, it'll do, do no, uh, no uh, harm at all. No, that's right. He's In the NBL, of course, he's playing against seven-footers and people just as big as he is, and so he needs this as a confidence booster. Uh, Pecunis just an awesome combination 23 to 7 and they're they're blowing the Sharks away but the Sharks will battle back don't write them off they'll, they'll be hustling all the way and they've given Pecunis plenty of good matches there you see Barry Douglas terrific defensive player on him hard Danny Adamson lets go a long long hard shot they don't give him anything for nothing Douglas with teamwork and the foul called on Sean, o uh, Sean Flaherty but they seem to be able to win the fast break and have a loose man running down the court quickly setting up the easy shots and the scoreboard tells the tale they lead by 16 points just over four and a half minutes remaining in this first term warren stanwicks one of the three stanwicks brothers in the pecuna side also uh, an outstanding player warren's been playing uh, top class basketball since he was 15 years old who's the best of the stanwicks Oh, I couldn't say. They all have different contributions. Warren is, a, I think, the best defensive player. He's really a strong defensive player. Uh, his brother, uh, the captain of the Devils, is uh, probably the best offensive player, or at least equal to uh, Darren, who is the other standings brother, who has got the most potential and the most talent. Well, they both missed. One with the two throws from the foul line, the other one with a three-point attempt. And it's Dale Butters who does some work to get it across to Postma. And the Sharks under enormous pressure in their defensive position trying to win the ball and bring it down the court. See how the, the uh, Pecunis just picked that up. Very good play. Uh, they weren't in a pressing defense, but the opportunity was there. And the two of them just with good uh, common sense and uh, team play just picked it up right away and put the pressure on. And they didn't get the ball over the court in 10 seconds. So the Pecunis side get the ball. We're watching the hustle and bustle of a pretty talented basketball combination for Kunis as Warren Stanwicks puts one in the hole for number six. And they lead now by 18 points in a game in which it's been all for Kunis. The Sharks needing a lift. Who's going to provide that? Bosma goes and lost it. Price went wide with the pass. It was a nice play. It was bad luck because he really created the opening on the back door, but it just the pass was just a little too strong for him. 
a nail-biting finish to last year's grand final in top shot Bakunas coming out on top they want to have another crack this year and the way they're heading with another basket from Warren Stanwicks eight to him it's now a lead of 20 points just over three minutes remaining in this first quarter Sharks lift nice rebound by Jeff Bosman he was fighting hard trying to get the ball but he ended up fouling they're working very hard, Sharks, but this this Pecunis is an awesome combination. Probably the best basketball team, uh, club team, I would say, in the history of Tasmania. I don't think you could say, uh, going back for years, maybe back to the old city of Launceston days with Jeff Randall and and uh, Candles and Leon Walsh and some of these <laughs> oh, people. Settle down. Oh, Nostalgia they, they, is not just a thing of the past. They were a fine team, but I'll tell you what, I don't think anybody can can uh, fault the Pecuna side. They've got good depth, and they have tremendous players, as, as shown by they're all in the uh, NBL. Well, they have the ball in position. Barry Douglas looking for a net. Couldn't find it. Let's remember, Pecuna successful in 84, successful in 85, and then we turn the clock back tonight in 81. So they've enjoyed the trifecta of successes in top shot, and they're heading in the right direction this evening. In the second semi-final, the grand final of top shot, at next week, winner of this game to play Dominoes, who won last week in a tight one. Danny Adamson working tremendously hard on the boards, but he's playing a lone hand right now. That is too easy. Big Murray followed up, but missed it. Stanwicks, Brennan. Darren Stanwicks off the court, turning the ankle in the first few minutes. But the Stanwicks brothers, Brennan and Warren, having netted 16, eight apiece in the first quarter. Flaherty does well to get through a nest of Pecunas players and is fouled in doing so. And Jeff Price has some worries on the bench. Oh, yeah, it's very difficult playing this awesome team. Sean made a very nice move there, cut down the center real well. Sean's a small player. He had to go up against six foot 11 Murray Shields and another six foot five player. It's pretty tough to get the ball up. Sean Flaherty, very good young junior player. Just They've got a few young players in the team, the Sharks, oh, yeah. don't Yeah, they're a good, you know, they're not. They're not little kids by any stage of the imagination, but they're uh, a young side. Danny Adamson is, has, uh, is the experienced player, and, it, and I think that's the future of basketball in the South, that all the teams have sort of built their games around experienced players, the Americans, and then uh, try to build these youngers along, because you've got to bring them along if you're going to challenge Pecunis with any kind of consistency. Just on two minutes remaining, and it's 21 points the way of Pecunis in this first quarter. And it's Brennan Stanwix who virtually crashes through off to Douglas. Getting up amongst them, Danny Adamson. What a task he's got this evening to try and ginger up the troops, get them back into this ball game. They need baskets quickly. Time running out in the first term. Perhaps it's a settling in period. Let's not be too critical of the Sharks who are battling, who are persisting, there but who is. aren't succeeding. There's Douglas. Will he go all the way? Of course he will. He'll do that to you three, four times again. Frustrating player, great defensive player, and he'll steal that ball, work, block shots, and do it all. He really can give you fits. Adamson looks classy. Is manhandled. Adamson with the, what's the extent of the knee injury, Don? I oh, see, age. <laughs> is that what it is? Age and wear and tear. Danny's been playing a lot of years. He's been in Tasmania, I think it's six years now. This is his sixth season in Tasmania. And, uh, you know, he's, he's played a tremendous, he had a tremendous influence on basketball in the South. I think players like Danny, Lindsey Houston, uh, the Americans that have come out here and stayed with us and, and brought this uh, higher standard to the South. Uh, and as you can see from the top shot final, all four quarterfinals were Southern teams. And that's something a few years ago would never be heard of with the likes of the Northwest clubs. Adamson hits seven of the Sharks, ten as they go to double figures. Just over a minute remaining in this first quarter. And Adamson from one end of the court to the other. Having to do some work. Having to sort out a couple of Pecunas players. This is Mr. Solo. Van Os Pelican cops some leather in the snout. And Douglas gets a little bit of space and has an easy one. And try to do a little bit too much there. You can't do it all, Danny. You've got to rely on your teammates. 23 points in it into the last minute of the first quarter of the second semi. And that's a new dance that Murray Shields was performing for us. It's called the Wriggle. All six foot 11 of him wobbling on the court like a big bowl of jelly. 
And there he is. Look at, oh, nice hands, Danny Adamson. Quick steal. There's that Barry Douglas putting the pressure on, forcing the turnover. Stanwick's long. Second time around. Makes it good. That's Brennan Stanwick's every 10 young, points. Every young player watching the game there, that's exactly what you do. You put the shot up, and if it isn't in, you follow it up. That's just experience, and you can't buy experience on, on for these young players. That's something you learn as the game goes on. One shot left in the first quarter. Flaherty won't take it. Teammate Will, Brian Price for a three-pointer. Was it a three or a two? That's quarter time. It's a three, a two. That's a rude sign from statistician and scorer Leon Walsh. But at quarter time, Bacunas blowing away the Sharks. A big first quarter to the favourites. They lead in the second semi-final, 35 to the Sharks, 12. A classy opening by Pecunis with Darren and Warren creating havoc. Sharks coach Jeff Price needed some magic to get his charges back into the match. At quarter time, the Sharks were down by 22 points. The Sharks looking down the barrel of a 22-point deficit as we start the second quarter. And there's Perry Douglas again, that quick hands, quick reflexes. Dan Van on the run, but he travelled there. Umpire calls travelling. It was all the way of Pecunis in the first quarter. Why was it all the way, Don? Too much height, too much strength. Right there, you see, look at there. they got three guys on Danny Adamson. He's gone up against all five and made the basket. Too much height, strength, speed, experience, everything you want in the basketball team. Pecunis have got it. Nine points to Adamson. Barry Douglas. He's the most sneaky player you've ever seen. He sneaks in and gets goals and he gets steals. He's just, uh, just one of those real garbage players. The garbage man, I call him. Sharks. The ocean child sharks. A mouthful. A long bomb attempt from Dale Butters. Wasn't successful. The Stanwicks work in tandem off to Douglas. Plenty of poise and plenty of hands want the leather. All Danny Adams could do against Big Murray was keep tapping upon the board and hope his players would clean up, and they did. Here's a three-pointer. Just, just off. Danny, when he gets hitting those, is a tremendous three-point shooter. Van Hoss Pelican inside the three-point line. Cunis by 22, one and a half minutes into this term. Pelican is wide. You can't go half-hearted to the ball when Barry Douglas is around. He'll take it right off you. Brendan Stanwicks, 12 points, leading point scorer in the ball game. And that lead is looking very, very handsome indeed in the early moments of this second term. And Pecunis haven't let up their defense at all. They've got a big lead, yet they're still playing as tough as they were in the first. Tell us what the Sharks can do. Just keep picking away just like that. Look for the good shot. You have to work the ball strongly. Brian Price scored that one, 39-17. Just keep working the ball. Big Murray inside. Dan Van up a mile. Murray Shields again. Danny Adamson just swinging it air. Very, very tall player. Murray Shields. Ex-banana bender. Hasn't got the guard on anymore. Has no. the confidence, which is good to see. For those who don't know what the guard was, he broke his uh, jaw early. Well, he didn't break it. Well, <laughs> someone broke it for him. Long Stanwick's pass. long. Leap from Flaherty. Pecunis. Just how, how uh, off-putting is such an injury, Don? From a confidence point of view, when a player is sidelined, how, how difficult is it to get that confidence back? Oh, particularly with a broken jaw and you're a big player and you're fighting Dan Van Horst Pelica coming out and Stanwicks, who, uh, Darren Stanwicks, who injured his uh, ankle early, is back in. And there's Darren on a nice drive. Look at, look at Pecunis on that board. Gee, just, just awesome. They're so strong and so big. Cunis are an ex-Lithuanian team, not an ex-Lithuanian team, they are a Lithuanian team, were established a long time ago by the Lithuanians in Hobart, and the term uh, Cunis means uh, heavenly lightning. It's very good, Don. I thought my <laughs> use of uh, Tony, Deep. Tony Andraconis would be very proud of me, one of the original founders of the club and uh, real stalwart for basketball for many years. Shot coming up from Flaherty. Well... Irrespective of what Pecunis means, I think in basketball terms, pretty good is, is an accurate description. As Darren Stanwicks 
Back on court goes the drive. But getting back to uh, the performance of Murray Shields, in this game, he is a dominating player. Oh, definitely. But, see, it helps him, too. He's surrounded by excellent players. And, and, and uh, there's Darren, the youngest of the standings and probably with the most potential. He's got a tremendous leap, good hands, everything that a player needs. How far away from being a Tassie Devils player? He was a Tassie Devils player and uh, was uh, cut a little earlier in the season. And he's been playing on the northwest coast, and he plays all over Tasmania. And he'll be back. He's a very good player. You'll see more of him. Eight and a half minutes remaining in the second term, and Pecunis lead by 28 points. They led at the first change by 22. Very good defense by Pecunis. Even though they're way in front, they're still playing that tenacious defense, not giving him anything. Stephen Moore. Yes, nice. well done. Nice shot. Stephen Moore, young junior player, just coming up into the senior ranks, made a very nice move, shot it with the wrong hand, and it was just an excellent move. Two Stanwicks work in tandem, and they do that ever so well. Brennan and Warren, and at least Darren, from an assistance point of view to the commentators, has the curly hair. Brennan 12 points, Warren 10, and Darren has two. So they've all figured and made the scoring board look pretty rosy for Pecunius. As Flaherty tries to go all the way, decides to feed off, which is neat. And the basket almost made by Dale Butters. Stolen away by Stanwicks to Douglas. It's a parade. They're just going down and scoring 49 to 19. They've opened up a 30-point lead, and uh, they look good. Sharks just have to keep working their offense. Don't give it away. There's Danny. More moves than a belly dancer, and he got around him well. He's got tremendous quick reflexes, but he's, I'm afraid he's a low hand. Look at that. Spin, spin, steps out. Nice hanging shot, and uh, puts it up there. Gets the foul. Two, two, Darren, two uh, fouls to Darren Stanwicks. I don't think they're going to worry too much about the foul situation tonight. Still that 30-point lead. Sharks playing just on pride right now. When you get down in a game like this, very, very difficult to keep your, keep your uh, momentum. Keep trying. And Pecunis makes you pay for every mistake. They just didn't get back on defense fast. They've got to keep hustling. Are they playing above themselves at the moment, Pecunis? They're, no. they're finding the basket almost at will. No. They're just playing just like they're capable of. Butters doesn't go for it. Adamson will. Very neat. You won't see any better moves than that. He spun him right off his hip and just put it up. Magnificent shot. For Stanwicks. At least it's easy to say because they're always in amongst the action. Adamson, 12 points for the Ocean Child Sharks out of a scoreline of 22. As a change from the sidelines, it's taken in by Warren Stanwicks, but new player on is Nigel Waters, number eight, as Shields, with the height, works it away from the effort from Dale Butters. And I can recall in last year's Top Shot series just how popular a player Nigel Waters wa was when he was on the court. The crowd seemed to warm to him very quickly, Don. Right, he's like Jack and the Beanstalk. He's the littlest player there, uh, littlest player on either side. He's, he's a smart little guard. And when you're standing beside Murray, he looks his, he eyeballs Murray's belly button. And he's involved in some, no, that's not him. That's uh, Warren Stanwyck's involved in some slapping from the side. Dale Butters. Flaherty will bring it down. Sharks 22, Pecunis 53. Almost halfway through this second quarter of the second semi-final of ABC Top Shot. Loose pass. Stolen by the man we spoke of, Nigel Waters. His first touch wasn't successful. A bit wild and windy. He's just warming to the task. He's facing the elements here at Kingbra this evening. Pretty brisk. Nice defensive play, nice transition, and a nice shot by Sean Flaherty. Good pass off by Dale Butters there. Nice assist. Got the ball moving quickly. What can you tell us about Sean Flaherty? Sean Flaherty is a junior player just up into the ranks. He's an excellent junior player, and he's a very good three-point shooter. Small player, good hustler. There's a nice play by the youngster again. Stephen Moore. And he puts it in. He's got a lot of potential, that boy. That's two nice baskets, two neat efforts by Stephen Moore. And the Sharks get to 26, Pecunis 53. They've almost cut it to 26, their scoreline. It's 27, the difference, with five and a half minutes remaining in this second quarter. Long bomb from the sidelines from Darren Stanwicks. 
and the Sharks in the last couple of minutes have picked up their play. Then you, you've got to give a team, Danny Adamson, three-pointer, it's good. You've got to give a team like Sharks their due. They're not quitting. They're working hard trying to play this very awesome combination of Pecunas. And with their youngsters, this is a good learning experience for them. You're playing the best. You've got to come up to Pecunas' standard. Murray Shields cuts through nicely. And there's Barry Douglas. And how did he manage to make that one? I don't know how he does it, but he does it a lot. 55 plays 29, and timeout is called. Hey, rebounds. Okay. Defense is our biggest yeah, problem. Set up. Set up. You're in. Keep persevering. What you're doing is now you're stabilizing yourself, not getting under pressure. Keep it in there together. Keep persevering because we don't want to get this game blown out of proportion. We've got a second half to worry about yet. Spring Danny on the 45, okay? We're going to the opposite side to where he is. Spring him from the bottom post. Danny, you right? Spring him up from the bottom post to a 45 and let him take his defensive man on, right? Defensively, we're going to get in the passing lanes, prevent those passes through the key, and above all, the court's wider than we've normally been playing on. So play the defence a little wider, OK? Just play the defence wider, spring down here for the 45. OK, come on, guys. Let's go. Whoa. Yeah, have a run. Jeff Price looking after the Ocean Child Sharks and passing on words of wisdom to a team that has persisted and a team that will continue to, to persist. There's no question about that. And they've reduced the deficit to 26 points. And they're working for another basket by way of Dale Butters. You've got a Meyer team that won't, that are getting thrashed well and truly, but aren't giving away. They're playing it like it's a fresh ball game. Kunis getting a little lethargic, working the ball. Danny Adamson, strong play. And there's some suggestions to the referee about that call. Well, that was, that was kicking I guess he kicked the ball out of bounds with his foot a bit unlucky big Murray Shields taking a bit of a rest and Dan Van Horst Pelliker comes back in gee strength to strength how often do we comment on the necessity to, for having a strong bench strength well that's what Pecunas have got oh they've got it all they've got the score on the board at the moment they lead by 24 points under five minutes four and a half minutes remaining feed off to Douglas Goes for and misses to be stolen by Posma over to Flaherty. The Sharks anxious to get back into this match. Long, not successful, Douglas. Van Hos Pelican makes his presence felt when just back on. Stanwix to Stanwix, and it's Darren. Now, surely a family of three must spend lots of time working out their moves because they seem to know where they're going. Well, they've played together for many, many years. Well, you know, they're still all young players, but they've been playing A-grade basketball for, you know, for six, seven years. And uh, they've always been good. And uh, it's, it's fine to see these type of players coming up through our system here. As I said before, a lot of us to do, they've played in the top competition for a long time. Hobart's worked its way from the Southeast Conference into the NBL, and it's given these young players the opportunity to play at the top. Adamson. Nice fake, nice pass off, and very unlucky. Slid his foot a bit, travel. But, but uh, Stephen Moore, young player playing well. Sharks just not quite getting back fast enough on defense, allowing uh, Pecunas to set the tempo. And a couple of wayward shots. Jeff Posma, nice rebound. Long pass down. Stephen Moore. It's good to see the Ocean City Sharks. They're setting it up. They're working their offense. They've got confidence in what they've got to do. Well, they trail by 22 points at quarter time. It's now 26 points, but they've had the better of the play in the last few minutes. Nice work from Flaherty and a miss. And uh, Stephen Moore, who we praised earlier on, wouldn't be happy with that miss. Just took it a little too easy. Nice rebound by the youngster, but there's Barry Douglas again. He's got hands that go everywhere. He's very, 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 very tenacious. Dale Butters equally as vigorous in trying for the purchase. Adamson with 15 points, the leading scorer for Ocean Child Sharks. Brennan Stanwix has 14 for... Pecunis, 57 good call. place 31. Good call there by the umpire. The uh, 
Kunis player infringed over the jump circle, got on the other guy's side, so it was a violation in giving the ball to the Sharks. Nice move, Jeff Fosma. Nice, soft shot. Gets it up there. Used the board well. 57-33. They're making it interest. It's academic to finish, probably, but they're, they're not giving it away. Let's not make too many rash predictions, but I'd suggest that your knowledge of this of these two teams and the wealth of experience that's being displayed by Pecunis, they give the impression of being on the bit at the moment. Oh, they're, they're just... Uh, uh, they've lost their intensity. You can't lead that far and, in, in, uh, you know, keep it up. But they're... <laughs> They just don't give you a break. They just keep pounding away at you, pounding away at you. Look at this defense. Right away, stretched all the way to the half court. you think they were behind. Very, very tight man-to-man, -man, pressuring the ball. Look at that. Darren Stanwicks, he'll slam it. Look out. Boom. Two-hand slam. 26 points in it. Stanwicks, eight points. That's Darren Stanwicks. Yes. A little bit of body contact there. But see how tough the is playing. 61-33 in the lead, yet they're still playing defense like it's a it's a even game. Under two minutes remaining in the first half. Frustrating the, team to play. The contribution from the Stanwicks brothers, all three of them, has been 32 points out of 61. Adamson's screeching, shouting, instructions are what he's calling oh. for. Then he wins some space and almost comes off with a beauty. <laughs> Brendan Stanwix, who's picked up his play, has been a fine contributor and looks a more polished player than, than last season. Fast from Butters just before he threw. Douglas having a chat to the referee. That's Stuart Lehman and the man in the moustache. With the pigskin is Greg Beeston, both from the north of the state, officiating in this top shot second semi-final. The winners to play in next week's grand final, their opponents dominoes. Marty's bowled out last week. That was a good scrap. This is a classy encounter. Pecunas lead by 28. And they retain that lead as the long bomb misses from Butters. But the feed from Adamson should have been converted by Postma, but was converted by Butters. They all had a hand in it. Now it's back to a 36-point margin, just on the 60 seconds remaining in the first half. Have to admire Sharks. They're still persevering, still working hard. Haven't given this game away by a long shot. Nigel Waters gets his name in the scorebook. 46 seconds to go in the first half. All Pecunis. Nice move inside. Could have maybe been a bit of a foul there. But good defense. Nigel Walters, little tricky dribble behind the back. Good play. Stanwicks. D. They've all hit double figures 10, 14, and 10. One shot left, perhaps, in the first half. It might be a shot for Pecunas as they all tumble over. Coach Jeff Price gets to his feet. A little he unhappy. A, what a passive sort of a chap, Don. Oh, you know, don't. No? No. <laughs> no. He's a, you know, he's, he's, he's got to stay calm in a situation like this. He realizes they're up against it and they're trying to battle back. Nice jump shot by Sean. No good. Uh, but he's a fire eater. Don't worry about that. Here's the final shot coming up from Van Hos Pelican. It's in the air and not in the basket. And it's half time in the second semi final here at the Kingborough Sports Stadium. And the scoreline is a good one if you're a Pecunis player. 65 Pecunis, Ocean Child Sharks, 35. The trend continued with Pecunis having all the firepower and the Sharks doing most of the chasing. Down by 30 points at half time, it looked as if it would be a long night for the Sharks. Pecunis holding sway by 30 points as we start the second half of the second semi final. Pecunis in the orange going from right to left and displaying all the power that's given them the justifiable right to be hot favourites in this competition and the mountain of the man Murray Shields hitting his 13th point in the opening seconds of this third term. We've seen Pecunis in action, we've been impressed. Don Hanson, they are a very strong team. They're, they're as good as you get around, around in Tasmania, there's no doubt about it. They, they've been a power for several years and really, really a powerhouse team. Stanwick's in two shields. It goes to Adamson, who's in the way. Referees this evening, Greg Beeston and Stuart Lehman. See, Danny stripped him of the ball there, but got a bit of arm with it. 
into the line, Murray Shields. Quite a good free throw shooter, Murray. You have to be if you're a big man because you will collect a lot of fouls. Way to go, Murray. Way to let me down. Just, we might touch on that, Don. How often have we seen these so-called experienced players missing from the foul line? Yeah, it's a, it's a very bad fault. Really, a free throw is just what it says. It's a free shot at the basket, and you expect players to take them. Neat bit of work there. Excellent by Flaherty, who does the feeding, and Posma does the scoring. Rebound by Butters. Sharks now trying to up the tempo, get their running game going a bit. Hit Pecunis before they get too steady. Whenever you play a big side like Pecunis, you want to keep the tempo and the running up because they can hurt you so, so badly once they get set because they're so tall. There's no rooms, there's no angles to get inside. Danny found a little one. Big Murray takes the ball. That's not a little one, that's Big Murray, all right. Murray's had the desert's disease tonight. The wandering palms, they've been everywhere. Look at that. And there they are again. Oh, up there strong. I don't know what the signal was for. I think he acknowledged that he pushed. No. Well, when he arrived in Tasmania to warm up for the NBL season, Murray Shields took up an aerobics course to try and get some movement and to try and get some coordination. He seems to be a lot freer in his movements now. He's, so lost, he's working hard towards it. He's lost a lot of weight, too. He was a lot bigger when he came down. Nice shot. Nice soft touch there in Stanwix. 33 points in it. Stanwix hits his 12th point for the evening. The cool evening. Hobart turning on resplendent conditions here at Kingborough for the second semi final. Meet under the basket to a try at Flaherty. And Danny Adamson up a mile to tip it in. Good play. That's what they have to do. They have to hit the Cunis before they get their defense set up because once they're set up, they're too strong. Flaherty assisting well this evening, and Adamson, by far the best scorer for the Sharks, has hit 17 out of their total of 39. Under 10 minutes remaining in the second or the second half that's the third quarter firstly once you let the cunis get in that strong defense it's hard to penetrate danny will penetrate up he goes short nice rebound oh nice hook danny with a rebound no good but he's fouled tenacity mm. there he he goes, give in. battling hard puts it up battles again and it's side ball, the Sharks. There's a three-point attempt. You can see it a mile away. No good. And over the back of the backboard. The Pecunas team led by 30 points at halftime. And they lead now by 31. Just over nine minutes remaining. The old step and go. Drew him into a foul. A lot of experience there. Brennan Stanwix. Named after Walter Brennan. His father liked the song, named the son. Nice drive, Darren, no good, and a good, strong rebound. Sharks hoping to hit back. They've faced the music, they've persisted, they've kept at it. They're chipping away at this lead, but they can't get back close enough to be a real threat. Adamson baskets another. It's 19 for the evening. Working very hard, Danny. He's working very hard underneath. Danny Adamson from Alacorpa, Pennsylvania. Where's that? Right next to Wish Wash Wash. That's your story? <laughs> Not his. <yet. laughs> they got funny names in Pennsylvania. Butters went wide and Van Hoss Pelican, who looks out of sorts in those in that footwear, it's the only footwear that's not the white, but he's playing well, and that was a fine feed to Darren Stanwyck, who knocked it in, does the acknowledging too. He's playing in a shoe known as a Sky Jordan, named after an American player who is a super leaper, autographed the shoe, was paid a million and a half dollars to put his name on that funny looking shoe you're talking about. Cash. That's the four-letter word that is a good one. Shields could have gone for it. Went to Van Hoss Pelican. Neat. They're all up. The man down was Brian Price. Nice feed off. Flaherty 
And there is nice defense. Three point attempt. Dunk. No good. The guys, Brennan. This time it's good. Oh, 23 man. points, 33 points, that is. Seven and a half minutes remaining in this third term. And it's a stalemate scoring wise. Referees this evening as the foul is called. Nice drive. Moved very well to the basket. Gave a little fake and a pump fake when he went up. Jeff Posma. Stuart Lehman calling for the ball, and there is Jeff Postma, well built Ocean Sharks player, who misses with the attempted scoring shot from the foul line. Sharks wins and get too disheartened this game because they've, they've run into a Pecunis that were really ready to play, rested, and uh, really fired up for this top shot. They really want it badly. They've won the last two. If you're a betting man, You'd say the odds would favour them winning this semi-final and going in as red-hot favourites in the grand final against Domino's. That's a new ball game as Murray Shields lost the ball. Adamson, leading scorer for the Ocean Child Sharks. Looking resplendent in their coloured uniforms and a fine three-pointer from Danny Adamson. Takes his personal tally to 22. He's enjoyed the evening. He's fired up. I wouldn't say he's enjoyed it, but he certainly has contributed. He's working very hard. When it gets to a, st a stage as such, Don, when there is such a big gap, a player, can he then perhaps be a little too conscious of his own contribution on the scoreline? Oh, no. He just, no, I don't think Danny would ever think that. He's, uh, Adamson is not the kind of player that thinks about himself. He's a terrific team player. He'll play it all the way with everyone. That's See, who we're talking about. So he could have taken that all away, but he, he decided to try to feed his uh, the young player coming through there, and, and that's good good team play. Long three-pointer. Oh, air ball. And there's the fast break of Pecunis, and that's what they can really work and really run. Excellent give and go. Stanwicks to Stanwicks. Brennan to Darren. Two points. One could be accused of the statters and the stammers, considering how cold it is and considering that we're staying Stanwicks all the time. That's Adamson for three. Adamson up to 25 on the night. The top team, Pecunis, boasting of talent. The Ocean Child Sharks, the first time in the Top Shot series, as Pelican makes a big, strong rebound and bangs one in the hole. Excellent play, Dan Van. Very strong player. 30 points in it. It's a bad pass. We've got a little low on his feet. It's pretty hard to catch the ball. You tell all young players, make sure you try to hit them in the face. It's easy to catch the ball above your waist, but it's pretty tough when it gets down low. Under six minutes remaining in this third term. An even term. 15 points to 13. Make that... 15 points to 16, so three a three-point point result Adamson. for Adamson. And they've outscored Pecunas in this term, the Sharks. They're going all right. They're, they're fighting back. They're not giving up. They, you know, they're, they're undermanned, but they're not giving up. And Pecunas aren't giving many breaks either. They've got their good side on there, but they're just too big and too strong. Beautiful move by Stanwicks. Adamson clears the board and on the fast break. Nicely fed off, almost accepted by Posma. Good blocking from Warren Stanwicks on Steve Moore. And the result was Darren Stanwicks for 16 points. That's where you can be hurt. You, they had the good move, Sharks. They just didn't finish it off, and Pecunis got the fast break right away and uh, really rubbing salt in the wound. Now 82-51, Pecunis well up and still playing that tenacious defense all over the court. Look at that. Trying to steal, working hard. You'd think with a good lead like that, they'd sort of ease up, but they're not easing up at all. Sharks sticking to their task, working their offense. Nice drive, went in strong. I think what Danny meant to say then was he didn't agree with the call. Yes, I agree. I agree that he didn't agree. There's the three-point attempt again. You can see it coming. Go ahead. Don't worry. Yeah, there it is. Hungry for the, the rebound was Postma, but he couldn't quite get to it. 
Good work on the boards by the Young Sharks. They're undermanned, but they're they're uh, still going strong to the boards. Jeff Posma, good strong play there. Dan Van Horst Pelican out of the game. Barry Douglas, the garbage man. Four and a half minutes remaining in this third term. 82 plays 51. Pacunas holding sway. The big drive from Warren Stanwicks. Warren's going over and telling Barry, look, I, I had it, I had the step on him. I didn't want to take the chance on dishing it off. A lot of young players make this mistake. You see, he's got the drive here. He could have dished it off. But when you're in your full stride of that, heading for the basket, it's better to take the shot than try to throw the pass off because uh, your man's in a good position to rebound even if you miss. Oftentimes, players will think you should be throwing that pass, but it's good if you've got the momentum to take the drive. Sharks trying to hit back. Runch, Price. bang. That's probably been what has been typical of the defense of the Pecunas team this evening, with Brian Price bustled into a, an off, bustled into a position in offense, but he was virtually beset upon by Pecunas players. No room to move at all, no right. breathing space, and what could he do? Called a trapping defense. They trap well. It's either get a player down, and then one of the leave his man and trap that player and try to get him to turn the ball over. See, there we go, the two men trapped there. Now they got the man in there. Barry Douglas up strong, nice looking shot. Danny Evanson up strong, but here they come again. He'll take it all the way. No, he passes it off. Probably should have taken that shot. Claustrophobic feeling by the Sharks in that position. 85 plays, 51. Under four minutes remaining in this third term as Pecunas attempt to stretch their lead and do it justice with Brennan Stanwicks holding one out. And the Stanwicks brothers, Darren 16, Brennan 18, Warren 13. Our stats man, Leon, Wal Leon Walsh, working overtime with the Byros this evening, particularly in favour of Pecunas. And with the Stanwicks brothers in full swing as Murray lost it. The garbage man picked it up just like he does all the time. Danny Adamson and uh, Murray Shields are having a little two-man war right now. Don't think they like one another. You might be right because Murray wasn't happy with that call. He's waving his hands around, as you can see, the big fellow, number 15. And uh, the referee, Greg Beeston, on screen in the moustache. It's Dale Butters going for a spell. Stuart Lehman, the other referee, handing off to Danny Adamson. Danny's still having a few words with Murray. Glistening Adamson. Solo performance by him, as far as the Sharks are concerned. 29 points out of 52. More than half. 30 from 53. You nominated him as being a player. Before the match, you said he was the one that they'd rely on. He hasn't let the team down. No, it's just that the others just can't quite match Pecunis's great depth in their, their all-round good, strong team play. Beautiful fadeaway jump shot by Darren. Murray had it and lost it. And you'll see Stanwick's again hustling defense. Look at this. Now they're trapped strong. Here's a chance. Big Murray. <laughs> How do you beat that? That's fine, that's Jeff Postma. That's that's a good play by a young player. Put the ball up high. You've got to shoot the shot with a little more arch than you normally do to get it up high on the board, and that was a really fine shot. He shot seven. Under three minutes remaining in this third term. They all grapple for it. Fouls on Jeff Postma. And we got a one-on-one -on -one situation as Big Murray checks out and Dan Van Horst Pelican comes on. Big Murray over his broken jaw and playing well. Does he get upset easily, Don? No, I don't think so. He, he, he's been known to get a little upset, but not, you know, I, I don't think more so than anyone else. He sure isn't uh, any, any kind of firehead or anything, you know. He plays pretty good ball. Let's see if Brennan can make the second. 91 plays 55. That is a lead of 36 points. Brennan has 20. Brennan Stanwicks. Adamson. 32 points. Top scorer in the ball game. 
And a very smooth move there. And, and all credit to the Young Sharks. They're working the ball trying to give Danny the opportunity to score because they know he's their main scorer. Oftentimes you'll see teams down like this won't be playing their offense and trying to get to the ball. They just kind of all take over, but th they're doing it well. Big leap by Dan Van Horst Pelico. Stan McSinn again. The Flyers were all Pecunas. The men staying down with the Sharks, and they win it away. Almost lost it again. Big Barry Douglas goes in for some muscle. And that's up wringing the fist, <laughs> the fingers. That's typical Barry Douglas play. Watch this now. See him? See, the foul is on Barry. See, he's pushed the player right away from the ball, but they've called it the other way. And that's typical of the garbage man, what he does. He gets in there and bustles people around, knocks them around, and somehow he ends up with the best end of the deal. How does he handle being called the garbage man? Well, he does all right, particularly when I play tennis with him because he, he understands which one of us plays well. He's still wringing the fingers. One shot. Barry Douglas. It's a nice rattling sound that must make him feel good. And he's chalked up his 14th point for the evening. Bakuna seven away from three figures. They lead by a big margin, 36 points. Cut that to 33, a big three-pointer coming from the sidelines from Adamson, who's heading for a 50-point game. He shot 35. Stanwicks to Stanwicks to Stanwicks. A and a grunt. A little bit of a charge in there. All up there strong. Look at that, Pecunis. Keep that ball live on the board. Barry Douglas hustling again. Darren Emmett. Nice. On hands and knees is Michael Graham. Some chanting and cheering. The moustache of Greg Beeston. Is that frost on the moustache? I believe it could be. Pointing from Barry Douglas. 33 points the margin, just over 60 seconds of play remaining in this third term. The damage done in this ball game in the opening minutes when Pecunis got away like greased lightning, for want of a better expression. They set up the scene and they've been able to provide us with the majority of play. And this is from Michael Graham, wouldn't do the Sharks any good. Brennan Stanwyck brings it down in a hurry. Almost lemon time. Look at that defense. Scrapping for the ball, hustling all the time. Barry Douglas going to take it all the way himself. Oh, he tried for a big dunk. <laughs> nah, Barry, forget it. <laughs> Coach calls out, nice pass, Barry. Danny Adamson out there where he's been scoring in the three-point line. Darren Stanwick's trying to hold him out. Oh, a long turning shot, all air. That was more of a, I hope that thing gets someplace. 15 points left, Douglas flips it back in. Sharks with the final shot in the third term. 10 seconds. Seven. Jeff Postma goes for three points, too short. That's three-quarter time. And at the final change, Pecunis shows Sharks a clean pair of fields. They lead by 37 points. Jeff Postma found some form in the third term, and Danny the Dynamo netted 20 points. That was the good news. The bad news was that Pecunis answered every challenge and increased their lead to 37 points at three-quarter time. Just 12 minutes remaining, and it's only 12 minutes of time for Pecunis to win their way into another Top Shot final. They've held sway right throughout this evening. They lead by 37 points. That and Barry Douglas opens up. See that right. garbage? It comes off the hands and all of a sudden, whoop, there he's got it, puts it in. Just 16 points of absolute garbage. Marvelous player. And he gets some trouble at the other end of the court by being fouled. <laughs> Uh, all ball. One point away from the three figures. That's the Bakunas total. And the Sharks with rewards from Sean Flaherty. The painting of the uh, three second lines and the circles have certainly give us a better scope on this court down here at Kingston. It's, it's uh, helped a lot with a lot of lines because it's a full recreational stadium and uh, that's really helped out as far as basketball is concerned. It gives the players a better sight of the court. 
helps the spectators too who are trying to become involved and do become involved as Van Holst Pelican goes the drive. Basketball, a very popular sport in Tasmania and a very keen and enthusiastic gathering here this evening supporting the two second semi-final teams, Pecunis and Ocean Child Sharks, Dan Van Host Pelican. Short with the first attempt, 99 plays 62. Dan took up rowing this summer to build his strength and you can see he's really filled out and developed into a very strong individual. From the side, Sean Flaherty. Adamson has 35 points. Captain Meyer, Ocean City Sharks, they're hanging right in there, working hard, not giving this game away, not throwing up any rubbish, working their offense, trying to get the ball to Danny. There's the trapping defense. Sean, nice three-point attempt. And they're hard on the boards. All in there for the rebound. I'll get their just desserts. Saw the shot from Butters just a little wide. And down the court for the easy two to Douglas, who gets some big cheers. We mentioned in the first term that perhaps the Kunis were on their way to a record score. Well, that hasn't happened. They've been able to increase the lead at every margin, but they've had to work hard for it. And the Sharks, but for that blowout early in the piece, have more than held their own as Douglas makes it 37 for the evening. But it's 101 to 64. 37 is the lead and 37 is the personal tally shot by Danny Adamson. He's strong on the boards. He's worked hard all night. Postma, nice feed. Flaherty on the 10 minute mark with 10 minutes remaining. Flaherty to double figures and there are only two players in the Sharks team who've hit double figures. The consistency of Pecunis, one, two, three, four, five, six. Pecunis players over the double figures and that just further emphasizes the strength and the depth of the Pecunis team. And accentuates the positive. They've got that tremendous rebounding strength, running strength and scoring strength. You can't can't key on anyone in Pecunis because uh, there's always somebody to take up the slack. Big long bomb from Darren Stanwix. How can you stop a team that can hit you from anywhere? Sharks with the ball. Flaherty outside the three-point line, now inside. Off to Butters. Flaherty not too big, but lacks nothing in terms of ability or perseverance. Slack from Van Hoss Pelican. Douglas, second time round, is all right. Let him get away with a charge there, and uh, that was not a very good call because he charged, and once he knocked the defensive player down, even though he missed the shot, at least he got the second shot. That's Referees realizing the game is no longer in doubt have sort of let things flow a bit. Danny Adamson again, up to 39 points. Could be looking at a tremendous scoring effort and a new top shot scoring record. He's got to beat 52 set by Jim Walker of the Royals back in 1981. He'd better move quickly. His teammate Sean Flaherty does. He jumps up to 12. They've been the two best scorers. Jim Walker is a big six foot 10 inch American that came out here to help the Devils early in the piece and the hell's that scoring record of 52 points. Van Os Pelican makes 14. And it's 107 to 70, the best team performance score-wise by a top shot competitor has been Pecunis in 84 when they shot 125 points. Douglas goes the drive and over the top is nice. Let's remember that they're playing 4-12s in 1986 as opposed to 220s in the years gone by, but they're 109 to 70, eight minutes gone. Last week was a big scoring semi-final. This week, the case as well. Danny Adamson, strong rebound. Creeps up a little farther, 41 points. It's probably the main interest in the game right now. Can Danny pick up another 12 points and uh, look at a new, new scoring record? Seven and a half minutes remaining as Darren Stanwix makes it 20. Personal tally for himself. He went off the court early in the term, the first quarter, because he appeared to twist an ankle. That hasn't done him any harm. He's back. On court, Adamson has it flipped away. Will he go again? He will. Flips around the ring it out. 
and he looked for a foul there, didn't get it. Four for Tunis, one for Sharks, and the result is obvious. That was unfair. Totally outnumbered. Danny Adamson, very unhappy with the referee in the side corner, but Sharks still working the ball. Blown out to a 41-point lead. Dan Van up, blocked the ball strongly, but took a bit of the player with him. You can see now a pass comes inside, nice cut, goes up strong, hits him with the body. Referee right in good position to make that call. And Picunis keep bringing in fresh players. We haven't seen them all. There are a couple of players who have warmed the bench for the evening. We see Michael Graham back on for the Sharks, number 13, bottom of your screen. And at the line, Jeff Postma. It's a lovely sound, isn't it? It's a nice goes. sound. All net. Let's wait to hear it again. And we did. Seven minutes remaining, 39 points in it. Douglas has it tapped away by an enthusiastic Brian Price. And from the side, Pecunis with perhaps their most inexperienced five on. Still got Brennan Stanwix, Darren Stanwix, Murray Shields, <laughs> and uh, if you call that inexperienced. Well, Nigel Waters is the only one that perhaps isn't as tall or hasn't had the background, but as you can see, uh, if you look at two Stanwixes and uh, of Van Ospelican on the bench, as well as Warren Stanwix and Murray Shields trying to drive Adamson. And Barry Douglas right there, right on top of him, stopping the fast break. What will Danny do? Will he go for the big one? He'll call for it from Price, who went all the way by himself. Makes two. It's 76 to 113. That means it's 37 points the margin. Slippery for you, Murray. Douglas. A couple of loping steps. I reckon Danny didn't like that. He says, how far can you run? Stood there in disbelief, 24. To go that far, you need a travel agent. Watch the play, Danny. He was having some discussions with the crowd. Lost it. Easy two to Brennan Stanwix. The Stanwix, let's check their stats. Darren, 20. Brennan, 26. And Warren, 13. Not too bad, 59 out of 117. As one of them, Darren, has it now. Like a gazelle, he speeds off down the court. But speeds off and does a little wandering at the wrong time. Only eight points away from the highest ever score in a top shot series. That was Pecunis, 125 back in 1984. And Shields goes the big rebound. Sharks aren't giving Adamson too many touches of the ball right now. Nice drive, Barry Douglas, but he missed it. But see, there you go. That's his working effort. Look at this. Won't give it away. Two rebounds, two grabs of the ball. Kept putting it up. That's the kind of player he is. Won't ever give it away. He gets plenty of... Encouragement from the bench. Warm applause. Keith Scott coaching for Kunis. And new player on court, Dennis Lockley, as we see having a spell, Brennan Stanwix. Dennis Lockley is a state under 20 player. There goes Danny, coast to coast, up and good. Dennis Lockley, number seven. Adamson goes to 43. Five minutes remaining. Lockley feeds off. Waters. Like that one, young Nigel Waters. When I say young, how old would he be? 21. Well, that's young enough. Yeah. I wish I was 21. Flattery. Oh. And Big Murray up in your face. Fades away. Danny Adamson up again, and he's fouled, but it won't go in. Chapel yeah. will be nice. Oh, yes. He's sitting on 43, chasing 52. He's nine off the mark. And yeah. we have just under five minutes remaining. Plenty of time. Are you a betting man? No, definitely not. I never bet. Will he make 52? <laughs> Adamson. That's worth about a half a point, but I guess we'll count it as one. Little Radley. 119 plays 79. 40 points in it. Oh. Shields with the big arms. A little bit of contact there. A backflip. Waters on the run. 
still going. Murray, Murray Shields, Shields comes in for some support. And a quizzical look from Danny Adamson. Greg Beeston. He's totally sorted out what the decision will be. Adamson having a bit of a chat. Waving the arms around. Four and a half minutes remaining. Second semi-final here at Kingborough this evening. There's Big Murray. Very tall player, but very well proportioned and strong. 122. Three away from the mark thereafter. I think they'd be well aware of it. Postma gets around. Adamson flew up. Got pushed right out of it. And that was a little a bit wild from Darren Stanwicks. Trying still trying to move the ball quickly, Pecunas. They haven't changed their tactics since the game began. Get the ball down the court quickly and get it in the hole. Sean Faraday, the second best scorer for the Sharks on the night, does well. Knocks in number 14. Solid looking player is Lockley. Let's see if he can score. He's not anxious to score. Team play, the order of the exercise for Pecunis. There's no hunger about them. They're all prepared to fight to a player oh, in a yes. better position. They're, they're, you know, that's that's why they're such a good team. Even we, even when you're just uh, blowing a team out, 122 to 88, 81 rather, they're they're well and truly in front, no problems. Yet they're just still playing that good team game. Nobody trying to be a big showboat. Just just playing it strong. Darren Stanwicks, the battle for supremacy in the Stanwicks. Household looks like being won by Brennan as far as the scoreline's concerned. He's 26, Darren makes 21. Warren has 13, they've all contributed well. Darren has 22, it's now 124 to 81. Just one point away from the record team score in a top shot game in 1984, scored by the team that lead this ball game, Bakunas. Stephen Moore, hooked a few in early. I don't think the uh, Sharks realize how many points Danny scored because they're not trying to work the ball to him as you would if you were trying to set up your teammate to go for the record. Danny's free now. Nice little wiggle. Three-point attempt. No good. He still sits on 44. Make that 46. 46 with three minutes to play. He's chasing 52. Will he make it? Will time beat him? Go we'll get him, Nigel. Up and down. Bakunas still chasing 125, have possession. Have a shot from Douglas. Does the crowd know they're only one point away? Ball from the sidelines to Sharks. Ostmar. Nice shot. Went up against Big Murray and took it right up in his face and put it in. Steve Moore for six. 39. Points the margin. Two and a half minutes remaining. Douglas misses. In the basket it goes from Graham Watkins. And that is 1-2-6, which is the highest ever score by a team in the ABC Top Shot Series. Bakunas knocking off their previous record back in 84. Time span different, of course with 4.12s as opposed to 2.20s, but the, the record will stand. Adamson, let's make it a double, Danny. He's got 46. And he's firing up for that Jim Walker record from the Royals in 81 of a personal tally of 52. He goes to the line with just two minutes remaining. I can't think of any player I'd rather see make it because Danny's been a tremendous com contributor to, to basketball in the state of Tasmania, and he's really helped the standard lift. He's put in some very hard games, and, and I, I just love to see his name up there in the top scoring list. What a sensational effort. Over half the score yes, barrel by the one person. And against an enormously good defensive team. They haven't given him any of these shots. Nobody's playing soft on him. They're still playing tough. They got Barry Douglas guarding him hard, and yet he's still up there 47, 48 points. And, uh, gee, I, can hope, I really hope he can get it because he's been such an ornament to the game. It would be a fitting... 
fitting climax to a, to a really good career. There he is, up on the boards. Go get it, Danny. He's got about a minute and a half to do something. Do something else. He goes for it. Makes it good. Half a ton to you. Top stuff, Danny Adamson. Two away. Come on, Dan. Let's get that two points. Keep working. 37 in it. Get in the ball, Sharks. Murray Shields misses. Danny Adamson on the break. Go, go, Danny. Ah, uh, he passes the ball off. Well, as you stated, that's been his forte. Unselfish play all oh, evening. Yeah. That was a nice little give and go by the Sharks there. Player gave a nice assist there. Steve Moore to the line. And the official temperature has just been passed through to us. It is one degree here. Feels rather cool. Ah. Oh. My feet are wondering where, where, what, what zone they're in. <laughs> I think it's called the Antarctic zone. I reckon. Bodies in the twilight zone and <laughs> feet are in the, in the Arctic. Lockley. Nice move and a big steal. Here he goes. Coast to coast. Steve and Moore does it. Nice left hand layup. 32 in it. One minute and 10 seconds remaining. Where's Adamson? He's at the other end of the court. He's watching. Sharks fighting it right out. From the sidelines, Adamson takes a sit down. One minute remaining in the game. More. And that's disappointing for the crowd. And disappointing, I'm sure they're not aware of it. No, I know they're not. Uh, uh, Jeff would have never sat him down. He'd given that chance to that record. Adamson's off the scene, having shot 50. The record in the ABC Top Shot series is 52. He won't get the record. We're only 40 seconds away from the final whistle. And it's for Kunis to go into another grand final to play dominoes next week in ABC Top Shot because they've sorted out the effort from the Ocean Child Sharks in a mean manner. The Sharks finishing on full of fight. The last 60 seconds have belonged to the underdogs. They're down by 32 points into the final half minute of the ball game. Yes, it's all Pecunis. It's set up for a, for a dominoes Pecunis clash in the grand final. I'm sorry I won't be able to sit up here and talk with you, Pete, but uh, I'll probably be doing plenty of talking down there, and uh, I think our young side will, will, will make a real strong effort against Pecunis. Uh, and it, it looks like it could be a really fine final. Steve Moore makes one. Time will run out. They won't quite make the ton, but it's been a high-scoring final, as was the case last week in the first semi-final. And exasperation for Steve Moore. They've ran on hard in the finish, the Sharks. It's been, what, 22 points at the first change, 30, 37, and now 31. And, but, well, I suppose you can say that Bakunas have sat back, but the Sharks have just kept on coming. Never gave it away. Barry Douglas. Into the final seconds of the second semi. Three-point attempt. Long and not good from Price. One shot remaining. Will it come from Nigel Waters? Long to big Murray Shields. Right on siren time. And that wraps up semi-final number two. And that wasn't a bad kick. No. Sign him up. Pecunis 1-3-0 have defeated the Sharks. 95. A record-breaking score for the favourites and a goal-scoring spree for Danny Adamson. Despite a difference of 35 points, the fans still had plenty to cheer about. With that victory under their belt, Bakunas will now aim for another top-shot title. Their opponents will be dominoes. And with experienced campaigners like Lindsay Houston and Peter Mann, it will be no pushover. And you can see the final of ABC Top Shot next Sunday morning. Until then, that's the ball game.